Hello, Hana family. Welcome back. Story one. Love is forever. My stepmom and my dad used to work opposite shifts. There for a while. He was on nights. Her on days. They'd set up baby monitors for when my sister and I were babies. My dad said they could record short messages on them. And they would leave them on the coffee table for the other person to hear when they got home from their shift. This went on for a bit. And then, once their shifts lined up again, they put the monitors away in storage. My stepmom died of cancer at a really young age. My dad had just got home from her funeral. He was home alone. He spent that night going through their things, packing up some of her stuff. He said he had one of the baby monitors sitting out on the coffee table. It woke him up in the middle of the night with an old message going off on repeat, a message that she had recorded. It said, I love you, Paul. I love you, Paul. Over and over again. My dad told me he just sat on the couch in the dark, listening to her message until the batteries died. A couple weeks later, he picked us kids up for the weekend. My sister and I went inside. He was sitting on the porch smoking and a strong gust of wind blew and he could smell that perfume that she always wore. It scared me as a kid hearing those stories. But now as an adult, I can see the beauty and peace in those experiences. Story 2. The Visit My grandfather was a bad man. He was an alcoholic and violent. One of his less horrible acts was abandoning my grandmother and her six kids, all under the age of 12. Now, some of his kids maintained minimal contact with him. He only lived about 40 miles away. When he was in his 80s, he was hospitalized. And then, in the middle of the night, he passed away. In the morning, the oldest of their children, one of my aunts, went to the morgue to identify his body and fill out any necessary paperwork. On her way, she stopped by my grandmother's house to break the news. When she came in, my grandmother said, Oh, it's a sad day. He died just past midnight, I imagine. My grandmother had begun to show some signs of dementia, or just basic old age forgetfulness. So weird comments weren't out of character for her. And my aunt assumed that the hospital or one of her siblings had already called to tell their mother the news. My aunt shook it off and drove to the morgue. When she saw the death certificate, she was shocked to see the time of death listed as 12.10 a.m. On her way home, she stopped at my grandmother's house again, and she asked her who had called to tell her the news, and asked why she thought he had died just past midnight. My grandmother said, oh, he came to see me at 12.30, and we talked for a spell. He apologized for all he had done to me and you kids. I think he had to make his peace and then was able to move on. I'm so glad for that. My grandmother then resumed working her jigsaw puzzle and carried on as if nothing had happened. Story 3. Haunted Military Base I used to be in the military. And the training camp bunk that we lived in was said to be haunted. Occasionally our stuff would go missing. And then reappear in odd places like under our bed or inside a bag that we had zipped up. No big deal, right? I mean, human error and all. Then came the instance that freaked everyone out. One night after lights out, my friend was on his phone texting his girl. Most of us were drifting off to sleep. Suddenly, he heard the shuffling feet from the corridor. So thinking it was our sergeant, he quickly hid his phone under his pillow, rolled over on his side, and pretended to go to sleep. Till this day, what happened next still chills me to the bones. While he was pretending to sleep, he heard someone right behind him, at the other side of his bed, going, Shh, don't worry. You can continue to pretend to sleep. I would dismiss this as a figment of his imagination except about five other people around him heard it as well, including me. Creepier still, there was no one standing there. And, 
It was the voice of a little girl that said it. For reference, our training camp is in the middle of an island. It was set up away from any of the main admin blocks. The island had been closed by the government for army training purposes for the past 15 years or so. There was definitely no civilians around, especially little kids. To make matters freakier, when we came back from our weekend home leave, there was a bunch of female hair on his bed, neatly bundled up, long, black hair. And under his pillow was a note that said, Remember me? Now, as I said, we're in the middle of a forest, in the middle of an island, and at that point in time, there was no female recruits personnel on island. Our bunks were locked up for the weekend, and the duty sergeant had no idea that the incident had happened. We never spoke about that night. Still gives me chills just thinking about it. Story 4. Walkie Talkie When I was 10 years old, I was at my best friend Max's house. His family lived in a very nice house on a mountain here in Georgia. Max always told me about scary stuff happening at his house, like how he'd see eyes, how his TV would turn off and on, how you could hear drilling sounds and metal banging sounds and doors opening up all by themselves. You know, the classic ghost stuff. I never believed him until this one time. We were in the hot tub together for like an hour when suddenly I felt the most overwhelming feeling to just get out. At that exact moment, Max looks at me and says, we need to get out right now. There was fear in his voice. We jumped out and dried off and we go inside pretty quickly. As we go in, Max locks the door and tries to open it just to be sure. It was locked. So we started going towards the big movie area that's near the back door to watch something. When out of nowhere, we're both hit with that fear again. We smelled what smelled like a rotting animal. And suddenly his DVD rack falls over. All of the movies fly off. And at the same time, that back door that he was sure to check to see if it was locked, flies open. Needless to say, we run out of that room, upstairs to another room. We make a fort out of beanbags and chairs to defend ourselves from paranormal attack or whatever. From that moment on, I believed in ghosts. But that's not the only thing that's happened at Max's house. Max's dad was a hunter, and he had a lot of nice hunting gear. In particular, he had some really nice walkie-talkies. Me and Max loved to play with them. One day, Max and I had the walkie-talkies. He was outside across the street with one. I was looking at the window at him. From inside. We were talking about how cool it was when suddenly what sounds like glass breaking comes in over the walkie-talkie, followed by a lot of static. I'm looking at Max in confusion, and he's looking at back at me from across the street. When over the walkie-talkie, we hear the deepest, scariest voice I can remember that says, How's it going, Luke? Followed by another sound of glass breaking. And then it was gone. I always thought that someone must have found a super random walkie-talkie channel and that just me and my friend happened to be on. They must have been listening for a while, and that's how they knew my name. But I don't really remember ever saying my name over it. I also don't use walkie-talkies much because of that incident. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Bye.